Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, highlights of 13 of the biggest games in the state from Friday night, including Shiloh Christian against Springdale and Russellville and Conway. Highlights of those games and more next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You heard that bell ringing? Good afternoon and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton and we have highlights of 13 of the biggest games in the state from last night. It was a great night for high school football in week two of the season and we start our show today with highlights from Class 5A with Sylvan Hills playing host to Little Rock Central. <laughs> Sylvan Hills lost to Bryant by 29 points last week and last night Little Rock Central was ready to stick it to the Bears. We pick up the action here with a big hit by Central's Demetrius Baker. Then it's Central on the offensive, trailing 7-0. Robbie Sullivan takes over at quarterback and throws to Derek Mason, who has moved to receiver. And that combination worked well for the Tigers. Sullivan goes back to Mason. It's a 21-yard touchdown just before the half. That tied it at 7, and Central goes on to win 17-7 over winless Sylvan Hills. Bryant started the season 11-0 last year, and a big crowd turned out to see the Hornets in their home opener last night. In the first half, Bryant quarterback Jeremy Wooten can't get the handle on it, and Catholic recovers at the nine-yard line. One play later, Little Rock Catholic standout quarterback Mark Everson runs around the right end for a five-yard gain. That's the good news. Bad news is Mark was shaken up on the play and did not return for the Rockets. On fourth and go, Catholic attempts the field goal, and it's blocked by Bryant. Catholic missed Everson not only at quarterback, but also his kicking and punting skills. And Bryant rolls to a 30-7 win. The Hornets are 2-0. They've won 13 of their past 14, and they're averaging 34 points per game this fall. Oh, yeah. Emotions run high when I-40 rivals Conway and Russellville get together. This year, the transfer of quarterback Landon Leach from Conway up to Russellville just added fuel to the fire. In the first quarter, Conway's Kyle Hillis went 15 yards. That put the Wampus Cats up 7 to nothing. Russell will try to come back with Leach, the former Wampus Cat, throwing over the middle, but being denied by his old teammate, Ernest Montvia. Conway stays on the ground with Brian Jones around the left end. That would set up Hillis for his second score of the night. It's a one-yard plunge that put the Wampus Cats up 14 to nothing early, and Conway cruises to an easy 42 to 14 win. Russell falls to 0 and 2 after two ugly losses. North Little Rock knocked off Camden Fairview down in Camden last week, and last night the Charging Wildcats headed up the hill to battle Fayetteville. The Purple Dogs built a 17 to nothing lead on North Little Rock midway through the second quarter, and that's where we pick up the highlights with North Little Rock's Mark Wallace throwing to Marcus Foley coming across the middle. That gets North Little Rock down inside the five. Then Wallace hands it off to Richard Lester who goes across. That's North Little Rock's first score. It's 17 to seven. But Fayetteville was not finished for the half. The Purple Dogs get in their two minute offense and go to work with quarterback Landon Keppel throwing first to senior Johnny Davis. Then Keppel goes deep to Davis inside the 10. And on the next play, Keppel tosses it to Dwayne Whitmore. That made it 23 to seven and Fayetteville goes on to win, but it was close. Fayetteville 31, North Little Rock 28. Now more of Hooton's Arkansas football brought to you by Lander. In Jacksonville last night, it was the annual City Bowl between North Pulaski and the Jacksonville Red Devils. Mark Johnson, he has lots of speed, and the Red Devils run him around the right end for a good game. That sets up quarterback Matt Lane, who rolls right, throws to Brett Powell, who's got a hold on it, and he holds on to it for a Red Devil touchdown. I told you about Johnson's speed. Now watch this effort. Johnson fights and fights, then fumbles, but Jacksonville recovers. And Lane will sneak it in for the touchdown. That made it 13 to nothing. The final was 57 to zip. Jacksonville is 2 and 0 and plays host to undefeated Bryant next week. Hey, look up at the sky. It's cloudy, ain't it? 
Yes, it's cloudy, ain't it? Yes, sir. Guess what? There's about to be a big storm there hit the go. field. Whoa. They say it may rain cats and dogs, fellas. It's going to rain nothing but dogs. Hey, last year, we took, last, last week, we took care of Little Rock. We took care of Little Rock. You know what we're going to take care of tonight? Cabot, 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 Cabot Arkansas. Cabot, Cabot, Cabot. We walk out of here tonight. This is not going to be Cabot, Arkansas anymore. It's going to be J.A. Fair, Arkansas. That's the J.A. Fair War Eagles getting ready for their big game last night. For the second year in a row, Cabot played host to Fair. Cabot Schools actually pays the War Eagles a little something to come up and play at Panther Stadium. And last night it paid off for Cabot. The Panthers led early, 7 0, until J.A. Fair's senior standout, Maurice Fain, got loose. Look at Maurice go, 82 yards for the touchdown. That tied it up at 7. And while Fair stuck to its game, running it and running it hard, former Fair standout and current Razorback Faquan Harris was on the War Eagle sideline, offering some encouragement and a little instruction. But neither Faquan nor Fair could do much with Cabot. Cat quick Aaron People scored on this quarterback keeper. Then Kenneth Yule follows big junior lineman Joe Baxter. They push their way in the end zone. Yule finished with 123 yards, and Cabot pushes its record to 2-0 with a 33-7 win over Fair. Get this, Cabot's defense was supposed to grab all the headlines this year, but it's the Panthers' offense that is averaging 34 points per game. In another game involving a Class 4A school against a Class 5A member, Malvern played Benton. These two teams have had some great games over the year, but both of the programs have been down a bit lately. Last night at Benton, Malvern quarterback Lynn Honeycutt throws to Donald Smith coming out of the backfield. Donald gets it down to the 8-yard line. It's a 15-yard pickup for the Leopards. But Malvern would miss a field goal from there, and it was scoreless until Honeycutt throws the quick out to Sean Williams. And look at Sean go, 43 yards to put Malvern ahead. The Leopards led it 9 to nothing at halftime, but Benton would come back to win in a shootout. Final score, Panthers 36, Malvern 21. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. We're going to get in the face. Sir, sir. You hear me? Sir. We're going to come out, we're going to get in O-set, and we're going to get in their face sir. right off the bat. Sir. Sir. Offensive yeah, lineman, we're going to hand the game to you to start out. Okay? We're, we're going to come out and go right at them. Yeah. Play with pride. Be proud of what's on your chest. You're coming to somebody else's place to defend it. And it's been challenged, hasn't it? Yes, sir. That's why that stuff's hanging up in your locker room. It's been challenged, gentlemen. Are you going to answer it? Sir. Sir. You're going to answer the challenge. That's Farmington head coach Brian Law, now in his second season with the Cardinals, getting his Redbirds ready for the challenge of Class 2A Elkins at John Bunch Jr. Memorial Field. On the third play of the game, Elkins quarterback Bo Mabry throws deep, but Farmington's Devin Isry out jumps Elkins' Justin Bailey for the interception, and the Cardinals take over. Out of the shotgun, they run the option with stud quarterback Nate Wetzel pitching to Dustin Delosier, and look at Dustin Gum right at you, twisting and spinning, breaking tackles. He's all the way down to the 12. Moments later, facing fourth and 12, Wetzel throws the touchdown pass to six foot four sophomore Sean Sterling. Farmington scored on all five of its first quarter possessions. Wetzel threw four touchdown passes in the first quarter, and this was a rout. Farmington cruises to an easy win over Elkins, 48-0. The BB Lone Oak rivalry produced some great battles, especially in the mid-90s. And after both teams won their openers last week, we expected a better matchup than we got last night at BB. Lone Oak's Chad Wise scored first on this nifty quarterback keeper to make it 7-0. BB tried to come back, heaving it deep, but Lono's Jason Parnell is there to pick it off, and Jason is going to go the distance. Look at him, 48 yards for the score. That makes it Jackrabbits 14, Badgers 0. BB's Bryce Hill plunged across the goal line just before the half to make it 35-6 to six at the break. Hill would carry 29 times for 157 yards, but Lono goes on to knock BB out of Hooton's top 20. Final score, Lone Oak 45, BB 28. DeWitt has a new coach, Paul Wilson, and now a new stadium. 
and it was packed on opening night for the dedication of the stadium and the Arkansas County shootout between the Dragons and Stuttgart. But nothing was new in this game. In the first half, it was Stuttgart getting some offense going, going east and west a lot, north and south a little bit, but it was still scoreless at halftime. Still, Stuttgart would spoil DeWitt's big night at the new stadium. The Ricebirds beat the Dragons again. Final score, Stuttgart 27, DeWitt 7. James King, an all-conference linebacker from Conway, has a 3.8 grade point. He hits the books just as hard as he hits running back. My success in high school football is no guarantee of success in college. Anything could happen. That's why I'm hitting the books hard and making sure I have the core curriculum for college entry. Play hard, study hard, and talk to your counselors. Be prepared for college. Study as hard as you play and be prepared for success in college and in life. Life is filled with moments. Moments that define who you are today and who you will become tomorrow. No matter where life may lead, you need a bank that will be there every step of the way. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by First Security Bank. And we begin our Class 2A coverage with a game from the 5AA South Conference. They get things started a bit earlier down there in that league. All the games kick off at 7 o'clock in conference play. This is Boxside against Glen Rose, and there's still plenty of daylight when Damian Sal takes off, weaving around and finally into the end zone on the second play of the game. It's a 28-yard touchdown. That made it 6 to nothing. Then a little later on third and goal at the 5, Tommy Gatlin takes the pitch. He trots into the end zone. Boxside's on a roll, and they can throw a little bit too. Short pass to big junior tight end Jim Kine coming right at you. In the second quarter, it's Tommy Gatlin again, right up the middle, stumbling into the end zone. Hooton's Arkansas football picked Blockside to win this game by 42, and it was a happy homecoming for the Miners last night. Final score, Blockside 46, the Glen Rose Beavers 6. Class 3A Central Arkansas Christian visited AA Arkansas Baptist last night, and CAC was driving early, but Baptist's Wesley Lambright comes up with a big interception to kill the Mustang scoring threat. CAC would get it back though, and senior Patrick Comer reaches across to put the Mustangs up 7-6 to six on the ensuing kickoff. Look at this though, it's Robbie Greer going all the way to put Baptist up 14-7, to seven, but Robbie forgot that good Baptists don't dance. The Eagles go on to win 20-14 to 14 in the 5AA North Conference with Carlisle, Harding Academy, Mayflower, Bigelow, and Baptist is looking pretty tough again. We've promised you highlights from the Chicken City Championship, and here they are. Class 5A Springdale playing host to Class 2A Private School, Shallow Christian, in front of 9,000 at Bulldog Stadium. We pick up the action early in the fourth quarter. The score is tied at 7. Shallow Christian quarterback Rhett Lashley finds junior Drew Tucker over the middle, where Springdale's Jeremy Teff wraps him up. But the Bulldogs would stop Shallow's drive. Linebacker T.J. Weiss drags Lashley down behind the line of scrimmage. Then Springdale gets its ground game going and looks poised to win the game with quarterback Will Hunt keeping around the right side. Then it's Big Dale Sloniker, number 33, getting loose up the middle. But Shallow's Andrew Carter makes the big hit to knock the ball loose. And Brad Godwin is there to recover for Shallow. That kills Springdale's opportunity with three minutes left. Shallow tried to respond with Lashley hitting David Meyer over the middle with a sweet toss here. But on the next play, Lashley's pass is picked off by Springdale's Jay Reddish. And the Bulldogs are back in business with another chance to win. Look at the willpower. It's Will Hunt scrambling and throwing to Bo Wilkins. And that would set up a field goal try. 27 seconds left, but it goes wide left. And the Chicken City Championship is a draw. Final score. Class 2A, Shiloh Christian, 7. Class 5A, Springdale, 7. No, I'm, not, I'm not happy with the tie. Um, I always want to win. I don't ever, no one wants to tie. Um, I'm real proud of our guys, though, my teammates. They played their hearts out. Um, lots of times we could have quit and let them in there at the end. We didn't do it. Um, you know, our defense played tremendous. Uh, offense sputtered at times, but hats off their defense. Their defense is wonderful. They're amazing. They were a, they were a smart team, uh, very well coached. Uh, 
I thought we should have drove on them a little bit better, but I'm, I mean, again, I'm not going to take anything away from them. They're a great team. Oh, gosh. <laughs> They'll be as good as any football team in our, our league, you know, with exception of maybe two or three, you know. Right. Uh, unbelievable is what it was. It was unbelievable, and it's something that, that our kids from both programs will never forget. This is what high school football is about. Uh, and hats off to Springdale. Uh, the city, the city won on this deal, and it's a great thing. And I think it'll even get bigger every year. Uh, and the talk continues. 7-7 seven, seven just adds fuel to the fire. You know, I don't. <laughs> I really don't think so. You know, I, I mean, our guys got nothing but respect for their those, those kids. You know, unfortunately, there's a few people that run their mouth and don't that re don't represent everybody. But uh, we we have a lot of respect for their kids and. Uh, there's no animosity, hard feelings. We're going to root for them to win the whole thing. I promise you that.